An audio amplifier is obviously a device that can amplify an audio signal. So what it can do is it can take a low power, weak signal from something like a headphone jack, and then it can turn that into a more powerful signal that can be used to drive a speaker. So why don't we start by taking a look at the main concept of what the amplifier does, what it is, and more importantly, what it isn't. So a transformer, we've talked about transformers before on this channel, a transformer is not an amplifier. So what a transformer is, is a device that you, you put electricity into it, then it will change the voltage and the current, it will transform those, and then electricity comes out of it and a different voltage and current. So it transforms the voltage and the current. So what it, it could be a transformer that doubles the voltage. But the twist with the transformer is that the power that goes into it is exactly the same as the power that comes out of it. So if you have a transformer that doubles the voltage, that does mean it cuts the current in half. Or maybe it doubles the current, but that means it cuts the voltage in half. So there is always a sacrifice. And that's perfectly logical, because if the transformer would magically produce more power than that you put into it, it would create free energy. And that, of course, doesn't exist. The amplifier does do that. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't quite create free energy, because it has an external power source. So it has some kind of battery or some kind of uh, power outlet. So it uses power from a power source. But what it does is it takes the input signal and the output signal will actually have greater power than the input. So it can raise the voltage without changing the current or raise the current without changing the voltage or just raise both. That's what an amplifier can do. But of course, like I said, it does need a power supply because it can't create free energy. So that's basically what an amplifier does. Now let's take a closer look at how it does that. Most um, amplifiers use transistors to do the amplification. A transistor is a small electronic device that has three pins on it. One of those pins is the input, which we call the collector. One of them is the output, which we call the emitter. And there is a third one, which we call the base. Now, what a transistor basically is, is some sort of valve for electricity. And this valve can be operated using that third pin, which is the base. Now, it's kind of difficult to explain, but I've got a very nice simulation on my screen right here, which I'm going to use to explain properly how it works. So right here in front of me, I have got an electric circuit simulator, and I'll put a link to it in the video description so that you can try this out yourself, because it's actually a really handy web application. This time, I am going to use it to demonstrate what the transistor does. So as you can see, this is our transistor. This is the input, so the collector. This is the output, which is the emitter, and this is the base. Now here we've got a 50 volt power supply, which it goes into this light bulb, and then the light bulb is connected to the input of the transistor. The output of the transistor goes to ground, which, if you don't know, it basically means it's, it's the equivalent of a wire that goes back to the negative side of the power supply, but this is quicker to draw. Then we've also got a variable power supply, which is now off, it's on zero volts, as you can see, which is connected to the base of the transistor. Okay, so, as you can probably see, uh, because of the yellow dots that are not moving, there is no current running through this circuit, which means the transistor is now blocking all of the current. It's like a valve that is closed. But when I apply a small voltage to the base of the transistor, you can see that this is actually, if we apply some higher current speed, we can see that a current starts running into the base and then also to the ground. But more importantly, this current through our main circuit now starts running, as you can see here. So by applying this very tiny voltage to the base of the transistor, we open up the valve and the electricity can now flow through the light bulb. If we increase that voltage, we can turn on the light bulb. So now the current is sufficient to actually power the thing. And this is the main principle of the transistor. So using a small voltage, we can control a much more powerful circuit, which is 50 volts. And the amplifier makes use of this. 
So now let's take a look at a very simple amplifier circuit. Okay, so I've quickly designed um, an absolutely terrible amplifier. So this is this is awful. I apologize to all the electrical engineers out there. It has many flaws, but because it's so incredibly simple, it is also incredibly easy to understand what it does. And that's what this is all about, of course. So up here, we've got our 50 volt power supply, which is the power supply of the amplifier. Then this is a resistor, an 8 ohm resistor, which represents our speaker, because the typical impedance of a speaker is 8 ohms. That is then connected to the collector of a, a transistor, and the emitter then goes to ground. This right here is our input signal. So this is a 40 hertz power supply in this case, which basically means a 40 hertz audio signal. So the voltage goes up and down 40 times per second. And that weak audio signal goes into the base of the transistor. Okay then, so now let's see what happens when we run this simulation. Just observe this animation for a moment. As you can see, when the voltage on the input signal goes up, the transistor conducts electricity better, so it opens up, and therefore more current runs through the speaker. So the, volt the alternating voltage of the input signal now controls the alternating voltage on the speaker. And you can see that down here. So this graph is a graph of the input signal. So it's 12 volts, as you can see. It's not that much. It's quite quite weak. And this is the output signal. So this is the speaker. And that's 50 volts, as you can see. So it's a lot more. So as you can see, these waveforms look exactly the same. They're an exact copy of each other. But this one's bigger because this is 50 volts and this is 12 volts. So we've now successfully amplified this weak input signal. And that's what an amplifier does. And of course, this is terrible. As I have just explained, this is an absolutely awful amplifier, which has tons of flaws. Um, but it does explain the basic principle of what most amplifiers do. Anyway, now you know a little bit more about how amplifiers work. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.